Welcome everybody to the Genesis Mindset and in this particular episode I will be going back into the Atropa ecosystem and talking about some of the things that I have been noticing and really wanting to get your feedback on where you actually think the Atropa ecosystem is. So as I've always said on this channel, this is a mindset channel. I'm not a TA guy. I'm not a fundamental guy. I'm a systems thinker. So I like to see things on a big scale. So I see things on a big scale here and I see, okay, there's something actually happening here with this Atropa ecosystem. I'm not saying that I'm an expert at the Atropa ecosystem, but I've always tried to analyze it based on the past. But of course, they're only just general indicators, really, nobody can predict the future. And so one of the things I think that somewhat sets me apart is that I never proclaim to be an expert of any kind. I'm always here learning. So um, <laughs> even, today, even today, Sonny was taking the piss out of me in Sonny's pub. Um, he's been explaining things. And even with the V1 and the V2, for some reason, uh, I was talking about this with Too Spooky and I even did a video uh, on providing liquidity and I said V1 and V2. In V1, you still get the fees. I thought that they fixed that where you actually get the fees, but I misunderstood and I misunderstood all the times. Everybody explained it. I don't know what I was looking at, where my mind was at. It really should be present. Uh, I don't know. I just don't know what I was reading. Um, maybe you, you end up reading what you want to read. So in any case, I need to clarify that. You don't actually generate any yield from the V1. It goes to the buy and burn. So yes, I would then recommend if you want to generate yield, then V2. Um, obviously as well, what Too Spooky was talking about was V3 with 9mm. So that's another option. I still haven't taken a look at that just yet. So I can't comment on that further, but I just wanted to clarify that point. So with that, let's actually get into the episode. So of course, this is not financial advice. This is just my personal opinion only, yada, yada, all that kind of stuff. So what are, one of the things that I've looked at from day one when I've looked at the Atropa ecosystems is the liquidity flows. So if we just zoom out here, we can see, I always like to talk about these macro flows. So I'll go to uh, WPLS first and then I'll go back to USD Valley because I think this is very important. But you can see the general liquidity flows here. So as Pulse was dropping, Atropa was going up. As Atropa, uh, Pulse was going up, Atropa was going down. And my boy Muddy Waters actually told me to invert this to make it even more clear so people can really see. So once it's inverted, the price is inverted. It's 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 ridiculously obvious. So now I'll go back to the normal scale. Now this is in WPLS. Now my question that I have now is the main point of this episode is to see where you guys are at, where you guys are thinking, because I'm actually starting to think potentially so I'm going to zoom up. Okay. So the other thing that I'm going to talk about first is the minor liquidity flows. And certainly this was not minor. So this was one of the big sacrifice uh, pumps. Basically, people were tracking the wallets. Big pump from the sacrifice. And if you look at the dates from the 7th of January to the 20th of January, and then if you see this big pump in a tropa from the 20th of January, to the 1st of February. So following from this came this huge pump in the Atropa ecosystem. So now what I want to do is I'm going to put this on, on full mode because I want to actually zoom out. Now, what I was actually looking at originally, or my, again, this is simply based on the past. So my thesis was, okay, the Atropa ecosystem is going to continue to pump for the duration until around about the start of April, simply because this here lasted for 110 days. So I'm simply ext extrapolating that this will also last for 110 days. Now, the reason why I've wanted to know about the flow of liquidity from the sacrifice wallet, because at the moment, that's the major injection of liquidity into this whole ecosystem. So there was this injection here. It didn't, it didn't shoot up to anything astronomical. Um, people people really selling a lot. And this is actually one of the reasons why I think, uh, actually, just on that point, this level of, honestly speaking, uh, it was definitely one of the selling points for this ecosystem that I tried to entice my friends to. Like, there's benevolent whales here. There's a founder who seems to be buying up the bags. So just like you got stock buybacks, this is a big thing with this ecosystem that we're, we're kind of betting on. 
but the level of expectation from the community that the sacrifice wallet, the OA is just going to come along and buy everybody's bags off them. And basically like, what's he going to do? Basically what he's doing is just pumping it. So then you can take it out of it and then buy the things that you want out of life. It's like, I don't really think it works like that. And to be honest, I don't really think it should work like that. Essentially what you're saying is, Hey, Richard, just buy me a Lamborghini, buy me a, buy me a mansion away, buy me a Lamborghini, buy me a mansion. It, it, it doesn't make any sense to me. I'm actually quite okay with the idea that the OA, if it comes to it, ends up do, ends up doing a big sell towards the end. I don't think everybody really deserves to just basically sit on this wealth and just extrapolate out of it and then live on a yacht for the rest of their life. I don't I don't really think the universe rewards that kind of behavior, to be honest. So um there are going to be people that are going to be doing that but on the whole i'm i'm certainly hoping that it's that economic energy is going to gravitate towards the people who are actually trying to make the world a better place because this is actually richard's primary focus yes he wants to make millionaires but he wants to make millionaires so the millionaires can make a better world this is the main thing one of the main thing that's gravitated this kind of community towards richard so i certainly hope uh everybody does make something out of this bull market but I, yeah, the level of expectation is like, oh, it's really, yeah, on Twitter, it's really, it's really full on. It's really full on. So in any case, back to this. So the Atropa ecosystem. Now, what I'm seeing is the volume has really started to drop off. Even though we've had this pump here, there hasn't really been a pump into the Atropa ecosystem, but also a lot of these funds haven't actually flowed into the core coins, Pulse Chain, Pulse X, Hex, so it's a very interesting, it's a very unique dynamic at the moment. Are we actually going to, are we actually at the end of the pump? Now, this is, oh man, this is going to get me in trouble when I post this into the Atropa ecosystem chat. People are going to be like, oh, you're fudding, you're fudding. Guys, it's not fud. I'm literally just trying to objectively see what I see and I want to see what other people see as well. I want this to keep going. I really do. I want this to keep pumping. I hope it keeps pumping. I hope it breaks its all-time high. We know Teddy Bear did. We know P Die did. A lot of that economic energy has gone into those two, which are the main like memes of the Atropa ecosystem. But Atropa hasn't broken its all-time high on the US dollar value, and none of them have broken the all-time high on the Pulse Chain value. So P Die hasn't, and neither has Teddy Bear. So that means there's opportunity. Now going back to the P Die, uh, going back to the uh, Pulse Chain to uh, Atropa to Pulse Chain, it's a fifty percent dip, and it looks like it's having a little bounce up. So this is a very interesting line here. So I, again, not a TA guy, not financial advice, but I do follow these very basic principles when it comes to TA. When it comes to TA though, I definitely like to follow like people who are much smarter than me and I like to follow their wisdom because I don't do this for a living. I just do this just, just for enjoyment. So this zone here, there's some, there's some resistances. There's some, sorry, resistance. There's support, resistance, resistance. It's like a, it's a big region. Now we're seeing here, it needs to hold this level and it needs to break out of this level. If, if over the next few weeks, it can actually break this level here because this also presents another big level here. So we've got resistance here, resistance, resistance, strong resistance, strong resistance, like really strong resistance along this area. So if it can break this, and again, here, strong resistance, it failed to break these levels. So can it actually break these levels? I'm not too sure how much liquidity is going to need to flow into the ecosystem, because at the end of the day, at the moment, the liquidity that we have is just swishing around like in a bathtub. Someone, my friend, uh, Vigilante Crypto, said this to me he heard this and i thought that's a really good analogy it's just going from one end of pulse chain back to the other end of pulse chain the liquidity is just flowing here to there so do we actually have enough fresh liquidity in the ecosystem without the oa to actually continue to pump this to the upside these are the questions that i'm asking now does this mean that i have fear for the long term absolutely not i'm still extremely bullish on this long term i still believe in the long-term targets i still believe that there's many, many X's to come out of the Atropa ecosystem within this cycle and within this and within future cycles. So again, all I'm looking at this going, okay, how can I act with whatever small amounts of pulse chain that I have left and small amounts of money that I could potentially put into this ecosystem? I have a little bit of money. Do I put it into this ecosystem or do I start spreading out into 
other ecosystems. AI has been something that I've been really wanting to put more money into, but I got such a low amount of new money coming in. For me, the Pulse Chain ecosystem was like the highest bang for buck. So I'm looking at this going, okay, are we actually going to, are we going to have a scenario here? And this is where I'm really interested to see what people are, what people will actually say in the comment section. What do you guys feel? And not just up or down based on what you want it to do. What do you actually genuinely think? If I was to give my honest, honest opinion, ah, oh, where's the bloody, where's the bloody paintbrush? Oh my goodness. Okay, if I was to give my honest opinion, my honest opinion, ah, uh, this is going to get me absolutely slaughtered, probably banned from the Atropa chat again. My honest opinion is, I don't think it's going to go this far down. Let's let's take that back. My honest opinion is it's just going to kind of like fizzle out along here and a bit of sideways. I don't actually see it breaking this level because I don't see new volume, new liquidity coming into the ecosystem. The volume has really died off. I could be wrong. I could be completely wrong. And I certainly hope that I'm wrong. There could be some kind of event. Now that Bitcoin is hit all time high, there could be this massive inflow into the Pulse Chain ecosystem, which is going to actually cause something along these lines for it to come up and then reject and then bounce up through there. I want something like this to happen. This is this is what I want to happen. Okay. This is exactly what I want to happen. But I'm actually thinking it's going to be more like this. So then the reason why I'm asking these questions and I want to see where the community is at is how are you actually going to participate? If it was me, if I had an unlimited supply of money that was coming in, I'll be buying right here. I'll be buying. And if it dips more, I'll be buying again. And if it dips more, I'm going to be, I would be extremely grateful that I keep getting these lower prices. If it goes up, it's like it's like bittersweet. It's like, yes, the price has gone up. My bags have gone up. The value of my bags has gone up, but it's higher prices now. I, I genuinely like lower prices to continue to accumulate. I might have some new funds coming in within the next few weeks. So I actually do want this scenario in a way. But also I do want this scenario in a way because there's going to be two different outcomes. If we start to get something like this, I can take a bit of profit up here and then wait for it to dip and then wait for it to have a nice big pullback and then enter in with some of that profit down here and then grow my bag this way. So I actually am not too sure. And I'm really curious to see what you guys actually think about this. So that's just the way that I'm looking at it. My honest perspective is we've actually peaked. We've potentially peaked. This is this is just my this is my gut feeling. Uh, it's not based on it's well, it's it's somewhat based on what I'm seeing on chain as well. That is to do with liquidity flowing into the chain and the volume that I'm seeing in the Atropa ecosystem. But again, I'm most certainly happy to be proven wrong. I'm not sitting, I'm not sitting here saying, hey, I'm right, and I'm not going to gloat when it ends up doing this or that, because I've said it could be this or could be that. My perspective is erring on the bearish side. Uh, should I be erring on the positive side just for the sake of being positive? I don't know. I feel like, I honestly feel like that's irresponsible, but I'm watching like, man, I'm watching Sami get crucified for putting like honest opinions. You know what? You know, the thing about Australians, what we're renowned for is our sincerity and our honesty. We don't, we're not going to tell you. It's not a, it's not a stage. Everything's not a stage show here in Australia. It's not like, like America, everything's a show. Like you go to the NFL and it takes like an hour just to do a quarter because there's all these bloody trumpets and everything, which is like great and entertaining. And it's not a criticism on NFL. Different cultures produce different kinds of temperaments and characters within people. We have grown up in an Australian environment where we're just honest. We tell it how we see it. That is, that's part of our nature. Now, everybody sees it differently. You see KDP who's fighting Somi, essentially saying, well, really in roundabout ways that he's an idiot. He's got it wrong. The, it's, we're not in the alt season, blah, blah, blah. He's too bearish. And it's a very interesting thing because ah, it's this battle between just being bullish for the sake of being bullish puts out this positive energy. That's very true. I'm bullish long-term. Nothing is going to change my mind on that. But short-term, short-term, do I just say, oh, it's going to go up. Let's be positive. Let's be positive. And people's expectations aren't matched by what's actually going to happen. Or do I be honest and actually say what I think it is based on A, B, C, and D? <laughs> These are the kind of things that someone who analyzes things a lot has to go through. And I definitely don't want to hurt the people who listen to this channel. I'm very, 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 very delicate about not wanting to hurt the people on this channel and not wanting to steer them in any wrong direction. So again, always take what I say with a grain of salt, but that's just, that's how I see things. I'm very curious. 
how you guys actually see things. So back to the charts. So as we can see, oh, wrong one. So now we'll go to the Atropa course. So I've, I've, I've reset up all my charts as well. So now the Atropa, the Atropa coin. So now if we have a look at this, yeah, P die. Oops, why are we on the five minute? Not sure why that is. So P die, we saw it broke the all time high, not in the pulse chain value. So this could be a good buy. Are we seeing a recovery? And again, if I'm I'm looking at essentially the three key ones, Atropa, P die, Teddy Bear. If these three things, these three things they kind of move a little bit different, but you can see a tropa and P die very much move very, very similarly. So if we see one of them being bullish, then there's a good chance the whole thing is going to be bullish. So we do want to see some bullishness. So if you're looking at scaling in, I mean, the PDI narrative, still one of the best narratives in crypto, in my opinion, one of the best potential future outcomes for this whole entire industry, let alone for Pulse Chain, for there to be, think about this, guys, for there to be a cryptocurrency stable coin that is not beholden to the whim of central banks. It is not beholden to anything related to fiat currency. I don't understand why people who've chosen this chain, the freedom chain, freedom of speech, Richard Hart, who wants to change the world and who wants to challenge the whole financial system. I don't understand why all these maxis are like, oh, it's garbage. It's such a, it's, it's a terrible narrative. You guys are idiots. I don't understand it one bit. Like you guys should be frothing that, oh, there is this potential for this narrative to play out on an ecosystem. And there's some people doing some hardcore research on this. Nine Iron Capital is doing some awesome research on this. And I think, I just think there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be humbled by their inability to see it. And the fact that they were so blinded by their own judgments and their own preconceptions about what cryptocurrency should be or what they thought Richard Hart wanted cryptocurrency to be. It's like, you guys are playing Nintendo, but Richard Hart's already created PlayStation 5. That's what I'm seeing. I mean, even this whole like ink thing now, the whole cognitive dissonance, the whole cognitive dif dissonance with ink is like when Richard Hart called it a meme, Two Spookies made some great, some great, uh, made some great memes about that because people are like the, the contradiction in the mind now. It's like, you can't deny, you can't deny that. Like this is a blockchain. This is a blockchain where the best thing for the blockchain is for people to use the blockchain. The best thing for PulseX is for people to trade and use PulseX. So there's more buy and burn because that is the, that's the number one feature of PulseX. So why would you be encouraging people to buy PulseX but not do anything with it? It makes no logical sense whatsoever. Essentially, what you're telling the world is just buy my bags and be my exit liquidity. That's what you're telling the world. That's how I see it. There's, there's, there's no two ways about it. And it's very difficult to take that kind of perspective seriously. What I'm interested in is everybody winning. How do we do that? By creating this amazing blockchain where everybody actually wins. And I'm seeing that in all these different communities within the Pulse Chain ecosystem. So again, back to the charts, a couple of little rants today. I do apologize for that. I'm very passionate about these things. So I'm very passionate about us actually all winning together. I'm sick of PVP, man. I'm so sick of it. Like when I saw crypto, I saw a future where everybody could win. But all I'm seeing really is just like the same crap that you see everywhere else, but it's just, it's just exaggerated by the, the volatility. So Teddy Bear, Teddy Bear was another one with USD where it actually did break its all-time high. So it broke its all-time high. So if we zoom out, broke its all-time high, and it's kind of dancing around here on the USD value. It's still got it's still got the big dogs, the crypto kings shilling it hard. It's still got a lot of people talking about it. The Telegram, the Telegram chat, I think it's up to like 5,000 members or maybe over 4,000, 4,300. A month or two ago, what are we in March? Okay, maybe three months ago, that was 3,000. So it's jumped by 50%. In the space of three months that's that's some serious numbers guys i'm pretty sure that's the biggest telegram of any meme coin on pulse chain so now bff another one what's going on with bff um uh, how, like how are people doing this like again it, it's it's blo it blows my mind when i was making these videos here straight away the next day it pumped up to 8k so i'm just going to zoom in a little bit here this is on the usd value by the way so this is not this is not pulse chain value I made a video here, 
great buy zone. The next day it pumped. It's like, are people buying it? Cause I'm making these videos. I like, I bloody, I bloody hope not. I do not want that. I do not want that kind of quote unquote power. I, I, I really don't want that. I certainly hope not. I certainly hope people just bought it because it had this opportunity, but then to see it dump straight away and then not go to that 8K, the target was 8K. And then people have just been selling, selling, jeeting, not being able to control. And you know what? I haven't sold a single anything of BFF. I haven't sold anything. I don't, I'm not saying I have a huge amount. I've got more than one, but I don't have a massive amount. But why are people selling? I don't, I, I don't understand. The goal was 8K and then we, we start creating a new floor. So... This, again, if you're really interested in the ecosystem and you're really interested in seeing it grow and develop, BFF is a very good opportunity. Here is, I mean, what are we on now? You know, we got that 70% dip. Once you get to 75, you know, this is, it's it's going to start to get accumulated. Maybe it's going to come all the way down to here. I certainly hope not, 90%. I mean, if it gets down to here, I will certainly, I will dead set be accumulating down here. If it gets below 1,000 and it gets to the 80 to 90% drop, I will definitely be accumulating because I think, again, we are going to make our way back up to this goal. It's going to be a lot slower, a lot longer because people are really selling a lot. A lot of people don't have that control over their emotions. And I'm not sitting here saying that I'm a master at my emotions. I still succumb to my own emotions. I have certain restrictions in my own life with which really put a lot of pressure on me. So for example, I'm a full-time volunteer, so I don't have a lot of money coming in. I do odd jobs here and there, but it's not like, it's it's not a lot. It's not a lot. So Mantisa is another one that I'm very interested in. It's going very much sideways here. So Mantisa, simply because steady pup, Oh man, P PLS, PLS pup. Have you guys been seeing that chart? That is phenomenal. That is a phenomenal looking chart. Uh, legal down. So I'm not going to go into all of them. So yeah, this is just a few in the Atropa ecosystem. So I just wanted to basically see, okay, there, there are opportunities here. Things are mostly down and they're looking like good buyers. If it was me, if it was me with like a huge amount of money coming in, I'd be buying here. I'd be hoping for it to go lower so I could buy more. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be loading up my full clip here because it might drop a little bit lower. I'm not too sure if it will. I'm not too sure if it won't. I'm not going to sit here and say it's going to be A or B. I really don't know. I'm just guessing like everybody else. And I'm really curious to know what your guys' perspective is. And yeah, uh, another thing, actually, you know what? I'm just going to pause this. Okay. Just going to go with what I originally had. I was going to search for something that was relevant to what I was talking about, but because this is a Genesis mindset and I'm very interested in mindset, and that's one of the things that I'm very passionate about, I, I pretty much read every day. So this book that I'm reading at the moment, The Diary of a CEO, The 33 Laws, hey all, 33 Laws of Business and Life by Stephen Bartlett. So he's got an amazing YouTube channel. I love, I've loved this book. And every day I'm reading this book and I'm like, man, I've got to share these things and it takes me so long to create these into TikToks and I was making like colorful pictures and everything like that. But I thought, you know what? I want to share these things with the audience. And if you guys actually find some value in this, I'm just going to spend like 30 seconds reading this little part. And if you like it, also, please leave that in the comments and I'll continue to do it. If you don't like it, this is pretty much the end. I'm going to finish up with this and I'm going to try to always finish up with my favorite thing. Because what I do is as I read, I circle out my, I don't know if you can see it, I circle out my, oh, there we go. I circle out my favorite little part. So, and I'd love to share those things. And I think that really, I mean, you guys can kind of read the book through me. So in this particular chapter, he's talking about the discipline equation. And this is something that I've personally struggled with a lot. And it's called the discipline equation, death, time, and discipline. So he talks about the fact that you're going to die. So you're going to die one day. And this is something that we don't like to think about. But when you think about this, not as a negative thing, but as a positive thing, if you have that in your consciousness that, hey, I am going to die, then your life is very limited and time is more more precious than any asset, more precious than gold, more precious than Bitcoin, more precious than a Chopra and Pulse Chain. Time is the most precious thing that we have. You're going to die. And in a distracted, noisy, complex modern world, this truth is therapeutic, liberating, and a wonderful way to stay focused on another important truth, which is that your time and how you choose to spend it is the only influence you have on the world. The allocation of your time will determine if you succeed or fail in your life's work. If you'll be healthy and happy, if you'll be a successful partner, husband, 
wife or parent. Our time and how we allocate it is the center of our influence. So there was a lot of things that really hit me in this. And he spoke about time betting and basically how if you consider your life and you break it down into hours and you have chips. So if you say, I have this many chips, I've got 400,000 chips left in my life. If I live to the average age of like 70, 77, which is the average American age, then the game ends when you run out of chips. And this really touched my heart. And once the game is over, you don't get to keep any of the things you've won anyway. So the amount of struggle and effort that we go through for all of this cryptocurrency, and you actually don't get to keep it once you die. It's, you don't, you're not going to get to keep that Lamborghini, that mansion, that thing that you crave in your mind, which you think you think that's going to bring you happiness, but it's really not. It's really not. And it's not for me to tell you that it won't. You'll see for yourself that that is a very fleeting moment of happiness because if that car actually does make you happy, why are the richest people in the world continuously buy? Why do they have garages full of cars? If it's like, oh, that Lamborghini is going to make me so happy. And then you get the Lamborghini. It's like, well, this one's not enough. Where's the next one? And then where's the next one? And where's the next one? So the reason why I'm talking about this is I want to basically share that perspective that I really hope that there's something that you really value with this cryptocurrency and grateful for the fact that we actually get to do these things with cryptocurrency and we have these opportunities to do these things with cryptocurrency and that you don't actually squander the opportunity that we're getting. We are actually able to participate in something where the wealth transfer is so significant, we can change the rest of our lives. Are you going to waste that on objects that you won't get to take with you when you die? Or are you going to actually do something meaningful for the world and be the kind of millionaire that Richard Hart wants you to be. So with that, I'll leave that. Hope you enjoyed that episode. Thank you very much, everybody. If you enjoyed that little book reading, please leave a comment below. I'd also love to hear what you guys have to say about the Atropa ecosystem, where you think it's going to go. I might actually put a poll on the community as well, on my community tab on YouTube. So thanks very much. Take care.